So clearly guessing what we need in the game, but engineering might because there's a very big difference between me. Today I'm going to be making good use of my mechanical engineering degree here to explain and react to the engineering behind Squid Game. In case you haven't heard of Squid Game, it's Netflix's biggest series reaching 111 million viewers in over 90 countries. I watched it and enjoyed it. If you didn't see it, spoiler alert, let's get started. What was that guy talking about, huh? You can't be a dead. The same Sangwoo who went to SNU, right? Now, I'm a big advocate for university and college, but I still find this scene kind of funny because people always assume that just because you went to a good university or college that you're also in a life and like the issues that other people have somehow don't apply to you. Obviously, that's not true. I think it's just something that universities like to make you feel to convince you to apply, get in, and take your money. You are allowed to move forward when it shouts out green light. Stop when it shouts red light. If your movement is detected afterwards, you will be eliminated. With that, let the game begin. Green light! Red light! <gasps> Obviously running isn't a good idea here, but I was a little curious to figure out how many steps do you need to take per minute to be able to cross the entire game arena in just 5 minutes. Another YouTube channel made a video about this game arena and they found that this game arena is about 120 meters long. So using that information and the fact that one human step is about 0.75 meters, we can conclude that they would need to take 160 steps in the 5 minutes or 32 steps per minute. So one thing they can do is count the number of steps when they're allowed to move and make sure it's at least 32 steps per minute so they can make it across in the 5 minutes that they have. Young. Don't look back, just listen. You can't stay there much longer. I think that doll senses when you move around. He's right, if I were to guess, this robot doll probably uses a passive infrared sensor, or PIR for short, and it's essentially a type of sensor that allows you to detect human motion, and it's the same kind of sensor that's used in so many common security systems. Green light! Red light! The way these sensors work is they're able to detect heat emitted by any object that has a temperature above absolute zero. They're able to do this because every one of these objects emits heat energy in the form of radiation that only infrared sensors can see and us humans can't. If you've ever looked at infrared security footage, the image of the object being detected usually appears as a bright red glow. During the game, the PIR motion detector probably uses a pyroelectric sensor in four steps. First, when the doll yells red light, the sensor takes a still image of all the radiation being emitted by all the bodies and the walls in the room. Second, when somebody moves in front of the sensor, like this person for example, it can detect that there is a sudden increase or change in the radiation being emitted in a particular area of the image. Third, this is because this is what the image looked like before the person moved and what it looked like after. Clearly, you see that there's some kind of change in radiation in both images. This change in radiation is then converted to a change in upper voltage, which then sets off a detector that probably triggers as well elimination you won't get caught if you're behind somebody else makes sense it looks like there's only sensors in the front of the room and there's no sensor in the side of the back of the room so there's no way they can detect your changing radiation if you're behind someone else who isn't moving I do not understand this. How is it possible for Ali to catch Ji Han like that with all the momentum that he has falling forward? Not only does he just catch him, but he catches and stops him, and Ali doesn't fall forward either. Like, I don't know how that's possible. I googled how much Ji Hun weighs. He weighs about 72 kilograms, which is approximately 160 pounds. Now, assuming that he's falling forward and about 55% of his weight is falling due to gravity, and the remaining 45% is on his back foot, 55% of 160 pounds is about 88 pounds. That means that's how much weight Ali needs to catch without him also falling forward. I think that's equivalent to catching an 88 pound dumbbell falling from your shoulder height. Just for fun, I tried it. I threw a 12 pound dumbbell from my shoulder height and see if I can catch it without myself falling forward. And I was able to catch it, but that was only 12 pounds. I can't imagine doing seven times that weight and still catching a dumbbell and not falling forward at all. Maybe I'm miscalculating some numbers here, but I definitely think that Ali needs to be ridiculously strong to be able to catch him and stop him with all the momentum that he has like that falling forward. This scene where everyone is like sad and feeling bad and defeated like that kind of reminds me of how like me and my friends feel after walking out of an engineering exam knowing that we all failed it. No. You should join me. We should just form our own team, don't you think? You're right. 
Who knows what game they'll have us play next. It wouldn't hurt to be in a group so we're ready for anything. I'll take you in again and look past everything. Come and join us. We were a good team for a while out there. Huh? This scene where everyone is making teams kind of reminds me of my first year of engineering where literally everyone in class was making their own squads or cliques that would all like study and survive engineering together and try our best not to fail. Come on, let me join you guys. Join what? I'll be your teammate. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what you're good at. Everything except the things I can't do. I feel like that would be such a funny thing to say in a job interview. Like your interviewer asks you, so. Tell me a little bit about your strengths, and you confidently respond, I'm good at everything, except for the things I can't do. The second game is Sugar Honeycomb. The shape you have chosen is the shape you must remove from the honeycomb. <laughs> Him licking it is obviously the right thing to do because it makes the cookie softer. From an engineering perspective, when the cookie is softer, it can withstand more strain energy before it breaks. This is commonly represented in engineering with something called a stress strain curve. Basically, what this graph is explaining is that a softer material is able to be stretched and poked a lot more before it breaks and cracks compared to a harder material. A harder and more brittle material will crack right away under a little bit of poking or stretching. Normally in graphs like the stretching curve, there will be numbers to explain exactly what's going on, but I won't bore you with that information. Damn it. Why'd you break it, you jerk? How's this? Ah! Shit, man. How are they just watching and doing nothing? gone. Whoa. That really killed him. Get yourself together and listen. Let's try something. Take three steps up when I signal. Up what now? But that's the end. So just trust me and they'll fall. No, we all do that. We might as well try. No, I can't do it. Move up or you die. I'll count to three. One, two. That's absolutely genius for them to move up like that from a physics point of view at least. That's because let's say both teams are pulling with a thousand newtons of force. That force only matters as long as there's tension in the ropes. If the rope loses tension, which is what will happen when they move three steps forward, the force that the other team is pulling becomes negligible and they can actually have a chance of surviving. Okay, so in this game they're supposed to cross a suspended bridge made out of glass panels. Some of these glass panels are tempered and can withstand our human body weight. Other glass panels are just regular glass panels and cannot withstand human body weight because they're much weaker. Now the issue here is obviously you can't determine which glass panel is a tempered one for you to step on. So every time you take a step, you have a 50% chance of choosing the correct glass panel. But let's say you get lucky and get a few correct. There's still a total of 18 glass panels that you need to choose from. So using my knowledge and statistics here, the probability of you choosing every single step correctly is 1 over 2 to the power of 18. This means the chance of one person starting and crossing the entire way just purely from guessing is 1 in 262,144. To put things into perspective you're more likely to get struck in your life by lightning three times than to win this game that's because the probability of getting struck by lightning according to the national safety council is one in 79,000. Oh, 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 oh. nice you beat the odds in the first one So clearly guessing what we need a game, but engineering might because there's a very big difference between manufacturing tempered glass versus manufacturing regular glass. Tempered glass is heat treated and because of that it goes through a lot of processes. To produce tempered glass you go through 5 steps. First you take regular glass and you cut it into the size you want. Second the glass then enters an oven at 620 degrees celsius. Third it then comes out of an oven and is immediately blasted with high pressure cooling air. This process is known as quenching and only takes a few seconds. Fourth, quenching cools the outer surface a lot faster than the center, and so because of that, the center tries to pull the outer surface in. Fifth, this then puts the center in tension and the outer surface in compression, which is what gives tempered glass its strength. However, for the most part, this doesn't change the shape of the glass from afar, so looking at the glass panels head on, I can't tell the difference. But if you take a closer look at both panels, specifically at the glass edges, you'll find the tempered glass tend to be more soft and smooth when you touch them on their edges. The reason they're so soft and smooth is because of the extra processes that these 
tempered glass panels have to go through. If the edges of the glass panels are rough or sharp to the point where it can even cut you if you touch it, then that's an indication it's definitely not tempered glass and you shouldn't step on it. In real life, tempered glass also has a sandblasted mark in the corner near the glass edges that indicates that this glass is tempered but I'm sure the workers were smart enough to hide that mark. So the player's best bet would probably be to feel the edges of the glass panels. If it's soft and smooth, then it's probably tempered glass. And if it's rough and sharp, then it's probably non-tempered glass and you shouldn't step on it. Hold on, wait one second. I can tell the panels apart. You can tell? I used to make glass for over 30 years. You can't normally tell, but when you look at tempered glass, when it's lit from the side, then you can see faint stain marks. What he's doing is actually really smart and yeah, I didn't even think about that. But when you look at light through tempered glass, it usually appears more wobbly or it would appear more warped compared to when you're looking at it through regular glass. Sending the refraction of the light. Let me adjust the settings. At this point is when he should start feeling the edges of the glass panels since you can't see anything. But regardless, if it wasn't for him, then 67, 218, and 456 wouldn't have made it this far. I actually do wonder what would have happened if no one made it though. Like, who would have won the money? This guy had his phone for the past four days taking notes and filming video and it didn't die? That, that's kind of unrealistic. Brother. You know why? I don't think the cop died and I'll prove it to you with some basic math and physics. First, a bullet to the shoulder won't kill him right away. What could kill him right away is the landing as he hits the water, so let's calculate the speed at which he hits the water. It looks like he fell off a cliff that's about the height of a 5 story building, and a 5 story building is usually around 75 feet tall or 23 meters tall. We also know that he's accelerating towards the water at an acceleration of 9.81 meters per second squared since that's the acceleration due to gravity. We also know that his initial velocity in the downward direction is basically zero since he's starting from rest. Using a basic physics equation, we can find the velocity that he has as he hits the water. Using some of the givens that we have and some basic math, we find that the velocity that he hits the water with is 21.2 meters per second, which is about 76 kilometers per hour or 47 miles per hour. For him to survive the landing, he must extend the impact for as long of a time as possible to basically be able to dissipate the energy for the entire impact. Because he's falling into the water at only 20 meters per second, the water can definitely absorb the kinetic energy that he has, which saves his life. Also, for anyone wondering about him reaching terminal velocity as he's falling, that won't happen because you only reach terminal velocity after you've been falling for 450 meters. So that shouldn't be an issue. Also, I think just because they're brothers that deep down he would not kill his own brother. Like he has to have some kind of sympathy towards his family. But I guess we'll find out in season two if there is one. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you made it to the end, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.